Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a lens review of the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master Lens. Now, I don't have the lens right now in front of me, but Steven and I did get to shoot with this lens out in San Francisco, where we had a chance to use the lens extensively in the Mirror Woods, as well as on a boat. So you're going to see sample images that show portraits, close focusing, lens flare, and boat stuff because we were on Bodie McBoatface. So let's jump into the pricing first. It's priced at $1399. Now the Nikon 24 1.4 is $1996. The Canon is $1549. And the Sigma E-mount is $849. Now up until this point, the Nikon 24 1.4, which I have right here, was the lightest of the 24 millimeters. Well, not anymore. Now that the Sony is out, that one weighs in at under a pound at 15.7 ounces. I can say in comparison to the Nikon and the Canon, it is much lighter in the hands. Now I do want to remind you that you can download sample RAW files over on the website. The link is up on the screen as well as down below. And we took those with the Sony a7R 3 as well as the a7 III. Now next up, we moved into the Mirror Woods. Now if you've never been to the Mirror Woods, they are amazing. There's really big trees and they're really, really old. So the first photo that I did take was of another photographer on the trip with us, Ted Forbes. Now what was great is I shot this photo at 1.4 and I used IAF. Honestly, in the low light situations with the Sonys, IAF came in handy, especially at 1.4 because it locks in on the eye and gives me exactly what I need. Next up, as we moved further into the woods, Sony brought out some models which gave us something to shoot other than trees. And so I got pretty close to this model with permission as always, and I used IAF to focus on her eye again at 1.4 and it looked really good. The focus was super fast, it didn't do any hunting, and it found exactly where I needed it to find. Now I did take a second picture as I had her move her head, and you can see in her one eye there was some chromatic aberration. Now we also call that CA or purple fringing. Now it doesn't show up all the time, but it depends on the angle and of course where the sun is. Now on some other sample images, you can see that it is even worse. There's some major CA and purple fringing in the jeans areas, but also Steven did a test shot with the sun coming in through a bunch of leaves and he didn't have any issues or any purple fringing in that photo. So depending on the lighting situation that you're in or where the sun is will determine whether or not you have a lot of CA or not. This is something that shows up in many lenses that are out there. Now one of the more extreme tests that you can do with a lens is shooting straight into the sun to see if you get a lot of flare. Now the one thing that we did is shoot around f16 and you can see some of the starburst coming around the sun which looks pretty cool but you can also see the flare. Now in some images there's more flare, in other images there's a lot more flare that you're seeing reflect off of the sensor. Now keep in mind this is shooting right into the sun. Generally when you're doing backlit portraits the person is blocking the sun so you won't run into as much flare. Now another good test is to do a close focusing test. How close can you get to the subject that you're photographing? In this case, I photographed a downed log that looked like it would make for a great desk and you're supposed to be able to close focus up to nine and a half inches. So I got as close as I could, locked in with the focus, took the photo and got some other cool photos with the sun coming down and the, and the trees all looking nice. I'm really happy with myself for those photos. Now let's take a look at the outside of the lens. Looks amazing in front of me. I still don't have it, it's, it's still in San Francisco, but there is an aperture ring on this lens. I'm not a big fan of aperture rings on the lens and I will tell you that when Steven and I were both shooting, the aperture would change on us and we would be like, wait, I thought we were at 1.4 and we were actually at 14. Now there is a way that you can sort of lock it, but it can shift out. There's an A option where you turn the ring all the way to A so that you control it with your front finger or back finger on the camera, depending on how you have it set up, and it should stay there, but it can move off of there. Now there is a button for de-clicking your aperture, which means you turn that off and now the aperture turns smoothly. Now, 
that's a great option if you're going to be shooting video and need to smoothly change your aperture while you're filming. There's also a focus hold button on the outside so that you can predetermine where you want it to focus, hit that button and it will jump back to where you had it set. And there's also a few other functions that you can set to that button as well. Now, since it's a G Master lens, it is dust and waterproof and that definitely comes in handy when we jumped onto the boat. But before we get onto the boat, it's time for the most important tests, the sniff test and the wind tunnel test. You may be wondering, how can I do this? Magic. Let's do the sniff test. Oh yeah, it smells very digital. It's like digital noise, you know the smell? Yeah, that's right. Now the wind tunnel test. <laughs> Black lung. Yep. Wind tunnel test is a-okay because this is a super light lens. Let me remind you that if you'd like to purchase this lens or any other equipment, there's a link down below that will take you over to Adorama. And when you use that link, it helps us out. Now let's jump on to the boat where we did a bunch of different things from environmental portraits to cityscapes. Now starting with the environmental portraits, there was somebody who had an LED panel light and they held that up and Steven got a great shot of this model. He has one where the model's looking at him and then there's another one where the model is looking at a different photographer, but I love the way that he was able to capture the candid nature. Now it's really sharp even at 1.4 in super low light. He was able to nail his focus as well as check out the background where you can see nice circular bokeh. That's one of the things that Sony talked about is that the aperture rings create a more circular bokeh. Again, download these images, pixel peep to your heart's content and you can determine whether or not this lens works out for you. But what I was really surprised at was during the cityscape photos, how sharp the images were edge to edge even when shot at f1.4. The one shot of the Bay Bridge is at 1.4, focused right on the bridge, and everything looks nice and sharp, for the most part, edge to edge. There's also sample photos shot at f8 as well as f16. You've got shots of Alcatraz, which was really super cool to go by close up. You have some shots of the Golden Gate Bridge in the background with a pelican flying, which is more of an artistic style photo, as well as a photo of the city itself. So overall, this lens did a very nice job. It's light, it's sharp, it has some nice features, especially being weather sealed, and it's less expensive than the Nikon and the Canon version. But there is also a Sigma E-mount, which I haven't used, that's $849. So at some point, we'll have to do a test of that lens as well. Now for you video shooters who like to shoot on a gimbal, you're gonna love this lens because it's super light. Also, being able to shoot wide open at 1.4 is gonna allow you to get that ISO much lower, which will end up giving you better quality video. So now let's talk about who this lens is for. A 24 millimeter fixed lens at 1.4 is a great lens when you have extra time to shoot. I like using a 24 to 70 zoom lens for a lot of my shooting, especially when running and gunning. But when I have more time to shoot, I like to break out the primes like a 24-1.4 because it gives me more time to shoot, to focus on what I'm trying to capture, and also they tend to be sharper and more vibrant in color because there's not as many moving parts inside the lens. 24 is also great for landscape shooters, especially when in our tests, this lens is sharp edge to edge, even when you're shooting wide open. If you find yourself shooting in low light situations and need a 1.4 aperture, this lens is gonna help you do that as well. If you're an astro photographer, this may work out, though I like shooting more with a wider lens for astro. I personally like using a 24-1.4 when doing environmental portraits, because again, I have time to set up those shots and capture it with a prime lens that allows me to move forward or move back. So to wrap it up, I think we got some great shots with this lens. It's light, it's fast focusing, it has a fast aperture of f1.4, it's weather sealed, and it's gonna be priced at $13.99 and be available in October. Now don't forget, you can download sample RAW files, the link's on the screen as well as down below, and if you'd like to purchase this lens or anything else, you can head on over to Adorama, just look for the links down below as well. And I wanna thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and comment, and that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polin, Fronosphoto.com. See ya.